we get rid of Ramaphosa, we get rid of the World Economic Forum in the form of his brother-in-law, right? In fact, if you get rid of Ramaphosa, you've got no more ANC on the top. And then, why don't you have a Zulu in the top seven? My goodness gracious, the Nguni group in South Africa, you must recognize and respect as the biggest group and the only person, the only one that really has a king that is active. And what did Ramaphosa do? Okay, he introduced him, then he said to him, let's go to the Soccer World Cup. Great. It wasn't safe for the Zulu king to go to, go to the Soccer Cup, so President Zhu. Zuma, the only, only ever good president we had after, uh, after Madiba, said, listen, don't go there, it is dangerous. You're in a fragile situation with your wife. Your brother wants to kill you, there's a lot of KwaZulu-Natal killings. So don't go to the Soccer World Cup. So what did Ramaphosa do? He went quickly around, got him in, in, in the Joburg Hotel, I went after, so Matsepe came out, greeted him, I went up. And I found the Zulu king with another wife that I didn't recognize. So what did they set him up to do? They set him up on drugs, okay? And they started taking the photos. This is South Africa. Set him up on drugs and now they've got all excuses. He's in hospital, he's here, he's there, he's there. Why did Ramaphosa plan to put the Zulu king on drugs? Why did he do that? And then why did he get everybody to take photos of a naked king and humiliate him? And therefore the king doesn't even go to his palace. He stays in Balitu. I went there. The premier of KwaZulu-Natal, under Ramaphosa's instructions, stopped the Zulu king's money. So I had to supply the Zulu king and pay for his staff. None of his staff, a Zulu king, a proud man, a proud man was humiliated in this fashion, caught by drugs. And then they can do with him whatever they want to. That is why I went to Nkandla, because I wanted to know for myself. What is happening? That is why I became a friend of the Zulu king that disappeared suddenly because they've given him drugs at the Soccer World Cup and he was never the same. And then the fights with his brother, the killings and all those things. And then you also m mentioned that you funded the former president's legal fees. Yeah. Do you know how many, how much money have you spent on his legal fees, and are you still? I don't know. I must ask and, Dali. And, and do you still? Um, 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 um. I sometimes it's it's fetched by other people, so I don't always know where it's going. I need to tell you a good story about that as well. But um, you you can understand something. Diamond business is a cash business, and I can I can go and look properly at every cent. But in principle, uh, I think my attorney can vouch for uh, seven and a half million for Nkandla and legal fees initially of about uh, nine to 10 million. It was, I wasn't aware that uh, the case was brought against uh, the media person. I must be honest, I didn't know that because I was just going to the Bloemfontein uh, Appeals Court and that was dealt with regarding his imprisonment and, uh, and the objections against that. So initially I wasn't quite aware what, but I bought the person. When I buy the person, I will go the extra mile for him. So it's not a lot of money. It is not the 28 million that I know that was owed. But I also think that seeing that the president will be found not guilty on all charges, I think the state will have to refund him all the money. So a lot of that money will, will come back. And um, I'm not really... Do you still fund the former president with his legal fees? Um, as a matter of fact, I didn't recently because uh, I'm made to understand that, that he's okay. That, but I will, uh, Dolly phoned me the other day that I had to help another comrade uh, that was really in trouble, and I did that. And I will do that 
to any person in need, whether they are from the grab land, first land, uh, whether they are uh, Michael the angel, I will fund whoever is in grave need. I am a Christian, and I am not a fundamentalist. Therefore, you can hear my language is not that of a fundamentalist. I'm a person. I bring my background to the party, but I care for every person on this planet. And then... Um what is your comment regarding the invalid signatures? Because I understand that yeah. they were, you were taken off two of the regional ballots in two provinces yeah. because the signatures were invalid. That's total nonsense. It's a discrepancy in the IECs. They are my staff that did it. I wasn't even involved. Let me be also be quite frank with you. Um, I initially never expected the signatures. That was something that was, I think they should have brought that to court because it's unfair towards small parties to suddenly get 16,000. I think I got by accident 13,000 and something, but it's not necessarily in the right provinces. But we got 1,000 and the real proof, he took it there, Dirk took it there, they checked it, double checked it, and we went into their system, and they can explain to you just now, but they went into their system, looked at though, though they were registered, and then got the signature and did it all right. We did everything right, but then the Freedom Front immediately, and it's, it's never happened to other people. I haven't read in the news. It's only Louis. It's only Louis because Media 24 wrote 309 articles and I'm the most well-known crook in the country. And you uh, didn't answer my question why did no, you stand as a candidate total, in Northern Cape? Uh, the Northern Cape, I, I didn't do that because the MK said to me that they're going to put my mate Paul Swartboy in there and he was on the list and he was also taken off the list but I think that was an internal uh, political thing. I need to go and see uh, President Zuma shortly after this meeting or tomorrow and then go and find out why uh, he wasn't on the MK list. In Namakwaland, uh, they it's an ANC area, I did uh, get three councillors but you won't get the main towns like Springbok and so on. And there's quite a few voters, obviously far less than what you would get. Like KwaZulu Natal is massive, I mean. Uh, but um, I, w I would um, support the MK. I've been supporting one of the Zamazamas there. Uh, it's the only EFF. He only had one T-shirt given to him for the EFF. So I gave him 10,000 rand for his campaign. And I will give him more because he's working with us. And I like him as a person. And I also believe that the the mineral wealth should be in the hands of ordinary people. So it's neither here nor there. Um, white people or my own brothers think that I'm stupid. I'm a businessman. If it makes business sense, then I would support the EFF to get control for the people because it's all about the people. If I can get it in a different way and a, a different approach, like I've been explaining, then I would do it that way. I am not, and did bring my body pen from Zondu, he is a crook. You should never, never have sat there in front of Zuma. Zuma is a man. You're a mouse. Why did you sit there? You were non number 19 on the list of candidates. And, and they took you down there. And now Ramaphosa has, you, has got you firmly in his grip. You're a crook. You should you should go because you can see in the a fish rots from its head. Zondu is a crook and so the whole legal system is becoming corrupt. And everybody knows that and nobody talks about it. They even want to jail you when you say that. Okay guys, thank you. Another one. Yeah, yes. Yes. Um, Amanda from News24. Yes. Um, I just want to know if you're funding MK or helping them to... Um I will always fund everybody that, need, that needs help. If I see that MK uh, hasn't got enough posters out and T-shirts, I, I sat with at Groblers Dahl because there was going to be a big uh, protest the next day with the EFF. I went and I saw Ali from the EFF for two hours and I said, Ali, we cannot have this protest. This is going to become dangerous. The Boere rock moeilijk. And I negotiated with Ali and Ali stopped the protest. There was not one uh, of the EFF protest there. We can negotiate with one another and we can help one another to have, we are actually only now going into a peaceful transition.
We haven't done it properly in 1994. We lied to one another. Now the real transition is taking place. How much have you given MK for its campaign? I don't know. You know, I don't count money. Uh, I, I must be honest with you. I give away nine, if I've got 10 rand with me, uh, I, I give nine rand away. So every single time I enter my estate, I give all the security 200 rand. And when I, when I go to the shop, I give them 200 rand again. And when I go to another, another appointment, I give them 200 rand again. I never count. Um, maybe uh, Daisy counts. She's got a book and she writes. But I never count money because I'm only copper. I'm only giving money from God that he gives me from my right hand to my left hand. So in between, I sometimes don't know what is happening. I'm not an accountant. Accountants cannot make money. They are selling their hours. I don't sell my hours. I sell my brain. And in between my ears, I've got a lot of money. Even if I don't have money in the bank tomorrow morning, I'll have 100 million. I came from the street. Within eight months, I had 40 million in my savings account. I booked into a five-star hotel without a card and without money. Go and look at the Table Bay Hotel without a card and without money, with only the clothing. And I flew. I went to concierge 11 o'clock at night and I say, fly 15 people from my previous work at Southern. I want to tell them there's diamonds in the sea. The next day I had 3.6 million in checks to go and buy boats. But then I got to the bank and I didn't have an ID because I was on the street. And my previous girlfriends, you know, when girlfriends get there, Aline, they burn everything. They burn your books, they burn your, your albums. I, I'm, it's like my history was wiped out. So I didn't have an ID book, and I, I pleaded with a woman, and I threw the checks there, and she checked the checks, and I said, I'm staying in room triple four. You must just give a, a five-star hotel. You must give the address to room triple four. I'm staying there. And she phoned room triple four. Is Liebenberg staying there? She gave me an account. And since then, I only had that APSA account. Uh, I don't like APSA, but uh, I don't like banks. You don't need a bank. You don't need a bank. You can just have gold, silver, and diamonds. That's all you need. Um, That's why they're struggling to get it from me. How can they get it? It's under the ground, man. Um, lastly, sir, you made a very serious allegation or damning yes. allegation against the president, yes. accusing him of setting him um, of setting up the Amazulu king. Do you have proof for what you've said, especially the stuff you said about drugs and alcohol? It's quite a serious thing to say okay. without um, giving proof for all these okay. things that you're saying today. I've done the statistics in my second year in my master's degree at UNISA, I didn't complete the master's degree in business leadership at the SPL campus. Now, one of the things we've learned is deviation of the mean. So you've got a, you've got a parabul, as we say in Afrikaans. It's got nothing to do with a woman's sex. A parabul is something that looks like that. So what you do is you look at that and you see how near to the truth is somebody. So here's the king. He's not on drugs. He's clean. So Ramaphosa fights with MK and with Butelezi. Butelezi and Ramaphosa ach, ach, and, and, and Zuma doesn't want him to go to the Soccer World Cup because they know he, it's, it's, you know he can be influenced and this and that, and the security was an issue. His security wasn't tight. So they tried to convince, but behind Butelezi's back and Zuma's back, he went and he arranged, Matsepe, arranged for the Zulu king to go to the Soccer World Cup, and he went. And you can see now, since then, what happened to the Zulu King. What happened when I walked in, Motsepe walks out, I go in. He's clean, he's clean, he's clean. I give him some money for the salaries, for his people and whatever, uh, in a whiskey box, okay? Yeah, sometimes you have to have, give a whiskey and some money, you understand? So, and he goes to this girlfriend in his bathroom mm -hmm. and he comes back and he's zonked out, totally zonked out after Motsepe was there. Why? It, he was clean. Why is he staying in Balito? Why did I have to help his staff? Because the Premier stopped the pay. The Premier stopped the pay of the office. The lady sat and cried with me in Durban because they didn't get pay. The Premier stopped it. So there was total manipulation, and the Zulu king was talking about KwaZulu-Natal must be on its own, with their own money, 
with their own economy. That is what we were talking about. The next moment this happened to the Zulu king and then all the trouble with his brothers and all the videos that came out of the naked woman and all this rubbish came out because they put him on drugs. One plus one is two. Do you have videos? Why don't, why don't you, you know, Network 24 has a problem with the truth. Why don't you place the videos of the Zulu king, of the Zulu king sleeping with various women because he's been put up with drugs and he doesn't even know who he's, who he's sleeping with? Why? Why cannot, why is the truth so sacred that it must be protected with a lie? The truth is the truth. And you know, I came close enough to understand what is happening. Nobody wants to believe that Ramaphosa is hurting people and is manipulating and Mabuza, hey. All the proof was there what Mabuza was doing in Pumalanga. Nobody wants to believe it. But when, the thing for me is, when Network 24 sees the truth, you will come, you will see, okay, that man was killed. Maybe he's just sleeping a bit. This is Network 24. There's another man standing up and I call a spade a spade. And I'm not afraid because they don't pay my, they don't pay my salary. And even if they kill me, I'm 60. I've lived. What the hell? So I'm not afraid to go and sit with Paul Moshatile in his house and talk about these things. Talk about these things straight. What is going to happen? The best that can happen at this stage is Mashatile may be becoming the president because the, if the ANC, everybody talks about the ANC must get less than 50%. If the ANC gets less than 50%, we're going to have riots in this country like we've never seen before. You need stability. It would be great if the ANC gets close to 50%. Even if the old man says that he wants to have a two-third majority, they can rather do it later. If the ANC gets less than 50%, we're going to have war. Because the ANC is not going to accept this election if they get less than this. Or if they can't go into a proper, proper, um, what do you call it, alliance. But the MK, ANC, uh, and EFF alliance would be the best move for them to make. And then you've got checks and balances because these guys don't like one another. So they will make sure when the one wants to spend money, says, no, not there. Let's get it here. And then hopefully the Afrikaner that still has the money, believe it or not, can play a role, but not the corruption that goes on between Afrikaners and the tenderpreneurs and the fronting and the BE nonsense that never gets to down to the real people. 54% of South Africa is still living below the breadline. 60% of people uh, uh, between 18 and 25, we all know the stats, do not have work. Why? Corruption. Corruption between the whiteies that has got a lot of money, the top companies, and, and giving all their mates the 50% shares, and then they go and sell it immediately like Matsepe has done with Sanlam. Sanlam has never been the same. Uh, Sanlam is destroyed because of Matsepe. Destroyed. Because what's the value that he added to Sanlam after he got all those shares? So BEE is not working because it's, it's not going down to the people that really need it. And everybody in South Africa knows that. And I'm just controversial, so I'm, I'm willing to say these things. But go and, test it at, uh, go and test the truth about this. I'm not saying the lie. Go and test the truth. Everything I say is true because I've been there. I've been there. I've seen I've been with the king, I've been with President Zuma, I've seen, I've been with, uh, with all these, all these ministers came to me. Lindiwe's all, both Lindiwe's, all these ministers, they came to me and they all talk the same thing. They're just afraid of Ramaphosa. They're just afraid. But they know it's all wrong. They know that the whole, this whole system is sick and the head of the snake must be cut. If I was Ramaphosa, I would resign today. Stop wasting time. We need democracy. Okay. <laughs>